So, next to talk about. I'm not sure if you guys seen this, but, oh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but do you know there's such a thing as, like, employee influencers? Are you guys aware of that? Like, guys and girls out there whose whole personality is basically talking about or sharing content where they talk about having a job. Like, what it is, what it's like to be a social media manager at this place, a product manager at this place, a coder at this place, come to work with me, a day in the life of this, here's how I go to work, my commute, yeah, and all this sort of stuff. It's, it's kind of like employer, employee, work, influencer thing. It's really weird, it's really lame, it's really G-A-Y. Anyway, this one particular lady went viral the other day because she got let go from Discord. Yeah, imagine. It's bad enough that you use Discord. I use Discord, right? I feel like a fucking nerd. I feel like a fucking loser for using Discord. But imagine it's bad enough using Discord, but imagine working for Discord. And then imagine how bad you would feel if you got fired from Discord. <laughs> it's bad enough. It's dorky enough what, using it. It's even lamer working there. And then imagine getting fired from there. So she got fired from Discord and she made entire fucking content around it, right? Um, I'll show you a little bit of the clip where she got fired. But this is her sitting down as she gets fired and obviously recording the whole situ the whole Zoom call for her fucking group of people on social media. And then I'll play for you the clip that I think should have been a bit of a warning call for her as to when she would have probably got fired. So this is her getting fired live, um, you know, while she's on fucking Zoom call. Today, we are making the unfortunate and difficult decision to reduce the size of Discord's workforce by 17%. This means we are saying goodbye to 170 of our talented colleagues. It's all the overreactions covering the mouth. The ah, ah. It's like, girl, you got an email. You got an email with a calendar invite. You probably added it to your Google calendar, to your iPhone calendar. It's on your desktop, especially if she's Asian, right? She's got fucking alerts popping up all over the screen. There's probably a million post-it notes all over her monitor. You know what day that fucking day was. Like, don't act surprised. Like, oh, oh, oh. Like, come on, man. Do us a favor. By 10.30 a.m. Pacific time, everyone will receive an email. In your email, you will learn whether or not your employment has been impacted by this reduction in force. I find out if I'm laid off in 20 minutes. Breakup text through email. Yeah, I got the email. Holy shit. So you see the email there on screen. It says, Dear Chloe, it's with a heavy heart that we inform you that your role has been impacted by our company-wide reduction in force and your employment with Discord is ending. <laughs> I love that they put that your role has been impacted. What is impact? Honestly, HR talk is so gross, isn't it? Your role has been impacted. Just tell me it's over. The dream is gone. Yeah, you know I mean, no more fucking monthly salaries for you. Sign on, fucking bitch. Sell your fucking clothes. It's over. Impacted. Come on, man. Impacted? Anyway, let's continue. It, dude. I am laid off. Fuck. Oh, my. Look at, she, honestly, this is fucking internet brain. She just got laid off. And what's she doing? She's writing a tweet. I got laid off. Oh, my God. I'm so pissed right now. Fucking hell. This is a nightmare. Like, bruh. Process your feelings, man. Go and cry into a pillow or something. Shout out of a fucking window. Straight away got fired and like, oh my God, I got fired. Lamau, it's not lit. <laughs> like, come on, girl. Oh my God. Uh, oh, wow. To be fair, the noises she's making with her mouth, if I was in any level of authority or management, I would also fire her. The noises that come out of her mouth, the way her mouth moves, the way her face is, I'd also fire her based on that alone, to be to be fair. You know? Like, I'd also fire her. She's got this fucking Princess Leia fucking top on at home and making those fucking faces and those mouth noises. I'd fire her for that alone. Okay, there we go. No more emotion. No more emotion. We prefer that. Good screaming. Oh, my God. That's crazy. This is how I'm going to go. 17% is a lot. Look at the boyfriend. Behind every social media addicted girlfriend is a boyfriend that just wants to vibe, man. He's like, he just wants to chill. He's feeling embarrassed for her. But, you know, it's your love. It's your baby. You just have to keep it rocking. Behind every cringy, behind every cringy, 
um, oversharer, there's always a really chill partner that just wants to relax, just wants to have dinner, doesn't want to take another picture, doesn't want to hold a light like that so you can get a good athlete, you can get a good fucking image. Like, you know what I mean? It's like, come on, babe. Like, I just want to eat, man. Fuck, I'm, I'm thirsty. I just want to drink my beer, my cocktail. Like, allow it, man. How many more pictures do you have to take? You know what I mean? Every, every, you know, behind every fucking annoying girl that stands in front of those butterflies and does that fucking picture, right? That fucking pose of the peace sign is a guy that's like, yo, I've taken a hundred pictures, bro. How many more pictures do you need? Oh, by the way, life hack. If you have a partner who's addicted to social media and wants you to take pictures, don't take pictures. Record them. Record video. And then let them take screen grabs from the video. Expert tip, if you're a guy and you're terrible at angles, you're terrible at taking pictures for your partner, you're rubbish at it, you can't do it, you fuck. You got fat thumbs like I do, you don't understand lighting, you're not good with the flash, just record a video and then let them take screenshots from the video. That's a smart trick, okay? Cool. Red panty night for the lads. Red panty night for the lads. Anyway, that's what she did, right? So she's out here recording a video of herself getting fired, which is absolutely hilarious. Um, I love the bit in the in the video where she, I think the text says she just bought a house. What is it about us humans? What is it about us humans that we always tend to like make the worst financial decision just before we get fired? Why is it, why, why does that happen? Is that like just serendipity? Is that just like coincidence that somehow you buy a house and then soon after you get fired? It always used to happen that way. You buy a new laptop, you get fired, right? You fucking, you know, you get your car repaired, you get fired. You book a holiday, you get fired. <laughs> you know what I mean? You put down some money for a wedding or something. Like, why is, why is a big financial personal purchase always followed by some tragic news? Why does that always tend to happen? Why as humans does that happen? Bad luck. Anyway, that was what she did, right? Now... I think this video prior, this video was recorded. I grabbed this from her Instagram. I think it was recorded many weeks before she got fired. And she was kind of like loving herself, right? Talking about how much she loves herself and how well work is going there at Discord. And she also talks about her performance review. She talks about her performance review. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when you're working somewhere and you have KPIs and targets and performance reviews and shit, in my opinion, usually... Those are usually, um, you know, those are usually, those are usually put in place as a way for the company to find a way to fire you anyway, right? They want to put everybody up on a chopping, chopping block, but they want to make sure that they, you know, go down, they do it the fair way, do it the legit way or whatever it may be. But usually whenever the performance reviews increase, there's usually followed by some cuts and some layoffs. So the only way to protect yourself if you're working somewhere is to make yourself um, it's to make yourself what's that thing called? Uh, indispensable. To make yourself indispensable, which means you have to make sure that you exceed your targets. You have to make sure that you're one of the highest performers in your team at all times, so that if it does come to the day where they have to make some cuts, you're the one person that doesn't get let go first. You're the one person that might maybe stay because of your you know achievement levels, because of how much you're overperforming, whatever it may be. Now, I think this girl was a little bit dumb and a little bit naive and maybe lacking in street smarts, work smart, whatever it is. She didn't see what was happening because I feel like this video that was taken a few weeks prior really did preempt her firing. I think they're already gearing up to fire her, but she didn't realize. And the reason why she didn't realize, I'm going to tell you after I play the clip, but I think you can tell in this video how she talks about her performance review. She thinks it went well. I don't think it went well, but she didn't realize. Let's play the clip. I think I love myself a little too much at work these days. Self-love! Ah. I just had my performance review with my management. Super sweaty. It's like getting the grades to your final exam. They're giving me feedback, telling me these are the areas of improvements that you have for this performance cycle. And I'm like, okay, okay, but like, any strengths? <laughs> I said it like that. It was a funny conversation. They were laughing. I was laughing. I'm here for the wins, you know? Life is more fun this way. This made me realize, wow, I have truly come so far. Whenever I used to get feedback, I'd be like holding back tears or I'd be straight up bawling. But these days, sometimes I get feedback and I'm like, 
I disagree and here's why. Or I just take it in stride. I'm like, cool, thanks for telling me. It makes me work better. But anyways, I got a meets expectation for this cycle, which apparently is pretty damn good for our standards. Woohoo! This hat, I shipped these things. I got a 2% raise, not even inflation, but I'm just happy I have a job. I hope Perp is going well for you. Stay safe, y'all. Apart from her being incredibly racist for eating a watermelon like this, right? And the way she cut it as well was very offensive. I don't think she realized what was happening. She didn't realize what was happening. She legitimately thought that performance review went well. When it's pretty obvious to me that it didn't go well. Because you know what? Bitch, you guessed it. She's the personality hire. She's the personality hire. She didn't know she was a personality hire. And whenever times are tough, whenever it comes to cutting people off, the first people to go are the personality hires. You know why I know that? Because I was once a personality hire. There was a time in my life where I was a quintessential personality hire all the fucking time. And then I realized at one point in my career that in order for me to actually get the roles that pay the best, the roles that were maybe to my level of experience or to my level of skill or whatever it may be, I had to be a bit more serious with my work. I had to take my work a bit more seriously. I had to approach it with a bit more of a mature mindset. So that meant putting the fucking personality to one side, which is pretty hard for me to do, right? I'm a fucking walking, breathing personality. I'm like an orb of personality, right? Just vibrating through your fucking screen. But when I'm at work, guess what? I'm an employee. Guess what? I'm a good team member. Guess what? I'm a leader. Guess what? I'm a hard worker. So that when it comes to the prime where they have to fucking call people and chop their fucking heads off, I'm the one person that might have to, you know, I'm the one person that gets some grace and I might get to fucking wave my fucking gloves in the fucking audience. You know, that's what happens. And I think, I think in this case, this young lady really misread her position in the company. She thought she was safe, but she wasn't safe. Now, another really startling point for me was somewhere in the beginning, she says like, I, I, I met my standards or something. Instead of exceeding them, she was happy that she was meeting them. I think that's what she said. Something about she met, let me just play the clip again. She said something about, I met my standards. Have for this performance cycle. And I'm like, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. But like, what is it? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Where is it? Where is it? management super sweaty it's like getting the grades to your final exam they're giving me feedback telling me these are the areas of improvements that you have for this performance cycle and i'm like okay okay but like any strengths obviously that bit as well was psychotic when you're in a performance like there's certain times in your career where you can show a bit of personality where you can use especially if you're a funny person and you have a sense of humor you can use that sense of humor as a way to kind of make yourself comfortable, to almost, um, you know, to create some level of familiarity and comfort with the person you're speaking to and just maybe make you stand out from the rest. Maybe an interview, that would be a good time to do it. Maybe during a presentation, when you're at work, you're presenting something and all hands or whatever, or whatever, yeah? There's, a, there's times when that humor can work. But I think a one time where you shouldn't have where you should put your humor and your jokes and whatever to one side is during a performance review. That's a pretty serious situation. Even if the company tries to tell you it's not a big deal, don't worry, this is standard, we're doing it everybody, always take a performance review personally. Always take it as a sign that, that you know, that they're thinking of letting some people go. It might not be you, but they're thinking of some people to go. So don't, don't offer yourself up. So put the personality to one side, put the jokes to one side and, you know, approach the performance review with some level of professionalism and try your best to kind of, you know, sing for your supper. But this whole like, oh my God, any strengths thing, not the best thing to do during a performance review, in my personal opinion. <laughs> I said it like that. It was a funny conversation. Funny conversations. Maybe to you it was funny, but they probably didn't find it funny. Again, this is her completely misreading the room. She got hired because of this personality. Like, imagine her in the waiting room, like, waiting for somebody to get, you know. Imagine her waiting for an interview in the reception. And then the person comes five minutes late. Oh, my God, I'm sorry you're late. Oh, no, it's totally, totally fine. Oh, my God. I was just looking at one of those sculptures over there. Is that... Blah, blah. Like, she's got one of those type of personalities, right? Like, nothing's a problem. Everything's fine. Like, oh, my God, yeah. I love... Blah, blah. All that shit. That's good during an interview. That'll probably get you the job, you know, that way. But to keep the job, you have to be actually good at what you do. 
you can't be personality higher forever. You actually have to have a level of skill, a level of ability. You have to be an important part of the team, whatever it may be. You have to, you, people have to notice when you're not there. You go on holiday and all of a sudden the team fucking implodes. They don't want to do. They're calling you, all this sort of shit. You have to be that kind of person. You can't just be a personality higher and then hope to just stay there forever and ever. Not in this economy. And they were laughing. I was laughing. I'm here for the wins, you know? Life is more fun this way. This made me realize, wow, I have truly come so far. Whenever I used to get feedback, I'd be like holding back tears or I'd be straight up bawling. That to me is another sign that she's not a good employee. Why was she crying at her previous jobs when she had performance reviews? Why was she bawling? Why was she shaking? Bitch, you guessed it, because the performance reviews weren't great. Because she was getting feedback, which she was never probably used to. Usually she's probably told that she was amazing. And now suddenly somebody in her adult age, or maybe somebody senior, maybe somebody younger, whatever it may be, is telling her, hey, you're not doing a good enough job. Do this and this well, or improve here and here, or you're going to get let go. That's why she was bawling and crying. That is another sign that not the greatest employee. But these days, sometimes I get feedback and I'm like, I disagree. And here's why. Also a bad tactic during a performance review. In my personal opinion, again, I'm a bit extreme. I believe in the doctrine of radical self-acceptance, no, radical personal responsibility. I believe in the notion that everything is your fault. Everything. The moment you internalize everything is the moment you can then address and, you know, sort out those situations. When you try to push problems away and kind of, you know, lump them at somebody else and say, oh, no, this person did this and that's why I'm not here, blah, 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 blah. There's no way you can solve any issues. And I feel like at work, especially when it comes to work, you should always internalize your issues. Because even if you work somewhere and the manager's fucking annoying and you hate your job and it's not inspiring and it's killing your soul, bitch, guess what? If you don't like it, leave, internalize it. If you're working somewhere and you're not getting a promotion and you feel like you're underpaid and undervalued, bitch, guess what? Ask for a promotion, ask for more responsibility, um, ask for a meeting with a manager to find out why you're being overlooked for certain promotions. But guess what? It's with you. It's in with you. It's your responsibility to obviously ask those sort of things. So I feel like in all scenarios, in all scenarios, even if you're working with somebody toxic that's trying to bully you, wherever it may be, take yourself out of that situation. Extreme Ownership, exactly, by fucking Jocko Wilnick. Big up that book. Take yourself out of the situation, but it's all up to you. So I feel like in these situations, if you're during, if you're in um, a performance review and you're giving them, and they're giving you feedback on your performance, you should just internalize it and accept it at that time. Even if you disagree, in the moment there, you should just nod and agree. Whatever requirements they, you know, whatever, whatever stipulations they give you in terms of, hey, here's what you need to do in terms of keeping your job, say you're okay with that and then attack it with full force and give it your best. But you shouldn't be sat there saying, I disagree and having a back and forth. A performance review is not a time to have a back and forth unless they ask your opinion. If they ask your opinion, share it. But even then, don't really say too much. I understand completely where you're coming from, boss. Um, I'm going to try my best to rectify the situation and address the points of concern there. And I look forward to our follow-up meeting so I can display how much of a crucial member of the team I am and whatever the term is, go from there. And even if you disagree with it, go and moan and bitch and complain to your wife or to your girlfriend, to your kids or to your dog when you get back home. In that situation, during that performance review, internalize it and move on. That's not a time to have a back and forth, in my personal opinion. Or just take it in stride. I'm like, cool, thanks for telling me. It makes me work better. But anyways, I got a meets expectation for- Now, in my personal opinion, if she's a, again, she's a product manager. I'm taking that term literally because I've never worked as a product manager, but I would assume if you're a product manager, you are managing a team of people. You're in the position of leadership. If you're in a position of leadership, I think it's, it's, I think it's inexcusable to have meets all expectations. You should be exceeding expectations. Meeting expectations as a leader is not enough. I don't think it's enough to keep your job. You can't be a manager a leader and meet expectations doing just enough doing whatever is on your job spec you have to go above and beyond that extra paycheck comes with extra responsibilities you can't just clock in and clock out you have to do a little bit more you have to set the precedent you have to set an example 
that isn't enough in my personal opinion especially if the company is already trying to make some changes and shit because I'm pretty sure this wasn't the first round of layoffs they probably laid other people off as a manager you need to you need to you need to be aware of these type of things going on personally she didn't read the signs and she got caught you know unawares but I think the signs were there from this meeting that she was already on a chopping block. As a leader, mean ex all expectations is not good enough. You have to exceed them. This cycle, which apparently is pretty damn good for our standards. Woohoo! This hat, I ship these things. I got a 2% raise. Not even inflation, but I'm just happy I have a job. I hope Perp is going well for you. Stay safe, y'all. To be fair, like, the, the raise and the promotion was a bit odd. Because I felt like that meeting didn't go well. So I don't understand why they gave her a promotion at the end of the year. Maybe it was in line with the company bonuses and stuff. And it's just an automatic thing that happened because she's at a certain level of seniority. But I don't feel like that conversation should have ended with a promotion. So maybe she has a reason why she was a little bit delulu. Because she was getting loads of different signals from that company. But if it was me, I would have read it straight away as, oh, they want to fire me. They're thinking of making some changes. They're thinking of cutting down this team. This team is too... Because I don't know about you, but when I work at places, I notice things. I notice, like... I don't know. I notice, oh, look, we don't have the nice cereal anymore in the cupboards. I notice, oh, look, we don't... We don't... You know, the free beers we always have on Friday have now kind of stopped. We now only have one crate. We used to have six, now we have one. You, you should notice where the tide is, you know, turning somewhat. You should kind of clock what's going on. So the fact that she didn't clock it was a big issue. But I think in general, the idea of being an employer influencer is an odd one. Because I feel like part of the issue as well, and I think I've seen some people in the chat mention it, maybe her real problem was the fact that she was oversharing stuff on social media. Maybe Discord in general just didn't like the fact that she was, you know, divulging way too much about what they do behind closed doors as a company. Maybe that's part of the reason. And that might have been the reason what kind of led to her getting fired. This idea that she was oversharing all the fucking time. And again, maybe there is no like law that they can put in place to stop you from sharing stuff about your work. I know some companies do. Some companies don't let you post stuff on social media. You can't post pictures of the inside of your office and stuff. But maybe technically they can't stop you talking about where you work. Maybe, right? But I guess in most companies, it's not something that they respond to well if they find out maybe that's what's happened there and that kind of maybe added and solid her because again f putting her naivete to one side she's a very charming girl very bubbly very cute very fun it's kind of hard to like dislike her when you see her on content but if you're looking at it from the from the lens of a employer she's a bit annoying you know a little bit annoying. So maybe that plan of maybe that might have played a role in her getting fired. But lesson to be learned there is that I think in general, everybody should practice extreme ownership when you're at the workplace. Everybody should be aware of what's going on around you. Don't be naive. Don't have your head down in a laptop or in a computer at all times. Take a look at what's going on. Is your manager running into meetings every five minutes all the time? Is there, you know, have all the snacks in the cupboards now not been replenished in ages? Has the fruit company stopped delivering fruits every fucking week? Notice what's happening. Notice all the little cost-cutting measures because usually the little cost-cutting measures like there's no, there's no more of that good toilet paper anymore is usually an indication, a precursor to maybe other teams and other people humans getting fired so you have to be able to preempt a little bit of that and move accordingly and if you're in a workplace somewhere and you don't feel like you're acknowledged you don't feel like you're valued you don't feel like your time is you know your time is respected you don't feel like you're getting paid well talk to somebody don't just bitch and moan about it online on social media that isn't the right way to go talk to somebody directly and then if you don't get the response that you want from there and you want to go use a social media platform to rant and rave do what you need to do. But I feel like running to social straight away with your problems out from work without giving people from work a chance to rectify them is really irresponsible, really reckless and really, really, really fatal because it can cost you your job. So be a bit smart about how you move and shit. And in general, personally, again, maybe I'm in the minority here, but I think if you have a good job, keep it yourself. Is that bad to say? Why are you sharing it with the world anyway? Why are you showing the world that you have this amazing job that lets that gives you a free cab, that gives you a free taxi to work, free lunch, you have a free gym, a sauna, you know, a MacBook, 
Like, don't share it with the world. Like, keep that shit to yourself a little bit. Like, have some privacy. If you have a social media feed where every weekend you're posting pictures of yourself getting drunk, you know, fucking tongue wrestling, randoms in nightclubs and shit, at least have one part of your life that you keep to yourself. That's your nine to five. You don't need to, like, let people in. Hey, this is what I do. Like, we all work. All of us have some level of a job, some level of employment, whatever, right? We all have jobs. It's not that deep. It's not that important. Who gives a fuck? The job helps you pay your bills, keep a roof over your head, and whatever it may be. That's it. You have to just, you know, have a little bit of decorum, a little bit of, you know, manners. I don't know. Like, come on. You don't need to show everything. You don't need to show everything. But again, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. What are you guys saying here in the stream chat about this shit? Let me quickly scroll through. Performance review is time to be serious. Exactly. Fashion Roman, Black Lives Matter, <laughs> Radio Britain, <laughs> Black Lives Matter. Um, Netwatcher says, Why are you so on the money with the sculpture bit? Yeah, exactly. Big up Netwatcher. Um, big up Theodore says, Narcissism. Yeah. I don't think it's not. She just got social media brain. I don't think it's narcissism. I think, I think we overuse the term narcissism with people. I think she just got social media brain. Social media brain where everything is content. I just, I just think personally for me, being an employee, an employee influencer is one of the lamest things you could ever be. Like having your entire content be centered around you having a job. What? Okay, cool. Um, yeah, Massa, basically, and if you don't like it, go as well. Exactly, Game Breed Football. She needs, she, needs a camping, she needs a camping trip with Chin. Chin will be lucky. Come on, Game Breed Footballer. Chin would be lucky to go on a camping trip with her. He'd be fucking lucky. He'd be fucking lucky. Not a Scooby, mate. And also, she's too much of, she's too self-absorbed. You can't have two self-absorbed people. You can't have her, you know, oh my God, hey guys, so we're camping like on one end and then chin trying to fix his fucking 10 grand barbecue set you know what i mean like you, you have to have at least one person that's like semi-normal and doesn't care about social media you can't have two people that are obsessed with that you know what i mean they wouldn't be talking to each other they'd both be talking to a camera the whole entire time it's just a bit too weird Discord just got 70 percent of the stuff yeah i saw that theodore no fab obama says i'm a bit behind but regarding octavian it's so much deeper than his ex he was wrong but his label shafted him for other business reasons couldn't have happened to a more deserving guy though yeah that's it you see no fab obama that's the thing when it comes to these type of things i read the same thing again I don't know Octavian. I've never seen him in real life in my entire life at all zero. I know none of his friends. I'm not involved at, in the slightest. I don't even pretend to be. But I remember when it went down, loads of people involved in the scene were coming out saying stuff about him. So that's a problem. Whenever you get cancelled like that and then you hear people in the industry come out and basically cheer on your demise and add, you know, and add fucking fuel to the fire and basically say how much of a dickhead you are and a cunt you are, it all but guarantees your cancellation because it's almost like they're now happy that this is the one occasion they get to kick your back in because they couldn't before because you're up, you know? That's the issue with being a dick. When you're a dick to people and you're up, it's good because they can't really say nothing because you're making money and you're famous. But the moment your star starts to fucking dwindle, they're going to fucking run to kick your back in. They're going to, they're going to go head first into your back. And make sure you are done for good because, you know, you treat them like shit. So I kind of get it. I kind of get it. Uh, Fashion Roman, it's one thing to share your life, but she was giving feedback on Zoom meetings and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I saw that too. I saw that too. Yeah. She had she had, a, she had this thumbnail where she was like, this clickbait thing. Discord, I might have to leave you. Sorry or something like that. It's like, yeah, oh well, bitch, guess what? Discord left you. Discord left you, babe. Discord fucking left you. Um, Case of Moses, you have to sign social media policy. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I, in some places, I know they do that in, in. I know they do that in Selfridges in the UK. Here we have this amazing department store called Selfridges. That might be one of the best places to work to and work for, work at if you want a retail job. I think if you want a retail job, like I worked at Selfridges back in the day, Selfridges might be the best place because it's like it's like adult university. It's a weird place. It's like adult university. It feels like a college, but you're with fucking adults and shit and you're all working. It's fucking, it's live. I don't, I, I'm not even gonna lie. Selfridges was one of my favorite retail jobs back in the day. Like, I swear to God, the amount of aunties I may or may not have smashed in there. Woo! Uh, let's continue. She's a baddie, annoying bird brain, but a baddie would chin make it, pine, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, see, Fashion Roman knows, yeah. Selfridges is fucking vibes, man. It's fucking vibes. And, un so, no, oh, sorry, that's what I meant. Again, 88 Deep Brain. I was mentioning Selfridges because I remember at the time I was there, 
I think that was the only place I remember where you weren't allowed to use your phone. Like, and they were very strict about it. Like, very, very strict. Now, some people obviously bent the rules and had it behind the tail and whatever it may be, but they were very strict about not using your phone and obviously not posting stuff on social media. Very, very strict. And if I remember correctly, you had to leave your bag in a locker as well. You couldn't even take your bag on the shop floor. You kind of had to leave it in a locker before you went in and shit. You got searched. Like, it was a bit, it was a bit mad. That was the only place I remember where they were really, really strict about um, phones and social media use, which is a good thing. I think you should be like that anyway. I think you should be a little bit professional, a little bit detached, a little bit focused when it comes to your work. You shouldn't be online, on social, like, you know, like, I don't know. I see people sometimes at work and they're on YouTube and shit. It's like, bro, what's the, what, like, no, and I'm not, I'm not even a goody two shoes, but what's the point? You got a job, like, just work, innit? You're only here for fucking what? Six hours, seven hours, eight hours. Do the job and then go home and you can do all that stuff. And your lunch break, you know what I mean? Like, you're on your, you're, you're, yeah, you're watching YouTube at work, like, really? Like, come on, man. Like, but anyway. What do I know? What do I know? What do I know? What do I know?